Boris Johnson, how is he seen by people like you and other Brits? Is he seen as a Jew? How is he looked at ethnically? Cosmopolitan. He was really as a trained clown. It was produced at the right moment there at the end of 2019, after all this Brexit stuff going on for the past three years. And, oh, let's get Brexit done. In short, he went around in his yellow jacket and his hard hat, uh, visiting workplaces and industrial zones. And I said at the time, and I got really criticised by the nationalist community for saying this, or some people in it, that, you know, if Boris Johnson gets in the British people, they'll, you know, they will deserve everything that's coming to them. So now, you know, he was the saviour and he got this massive 80-seat majority in December. But now the hashtag yesterday was Boris has failed the UK. More and more people can see just the ridiculousness of it. They said, oh, yes, you know, masks, it, mandatory in takeaways. And then you've got this uh, Gove, Michael Gove, Minister for the Cabinet Office. That's what he is, a Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. And he was photographed in a takeaway shot without a mask. So now suddenly it's not obligatory to wear a mask in a takeaway food joint. And people that just see these kind of things that are happening every day, there's supposed to have been a report published and he's not even read it. He pretty much admitted yesterday in Parliament that Boris has not read it. So he's just seen as an idiot. He's got about 10 kids with, uh, I don't know how many different women, but they're certainly not all with his ex-wife. There's four or five different, you know, he's a philanderer. Uh, he's expecting another baby, I think, with his girlfriend now. Uh, it's got about 10 kids, all from different women. Not all, I don't know, but, I you know, half of them. I knew he had one in the last couple of years, it seems like, but boy, I didn't know. Well, well there's, there's also talk that he has a daughter with this Jennifer R. Cooley woman. That's not his current girlfriend, that was the one before. And he's got one of these D notices out on her to stop her publishing the fact that he's the father of this three-year-old daughter. Plus, there's this other one now that's just just about to pop out. I think he's got six with his wife or ex-wife, whatever. And, and she was philandering as well. She's a barrister of QC, apparently. So uh, just no, yeah, as you say, as you're saying, no moral character, no back. Bone. He's just been in there at Eton, one of the Eton lads waiting in the wings. Theresa May had him as foreign secretary to stop him blundering, making the usual blunders. He was mayor of London you know, and all his massive projects. He announces these big, fantastic projects, but none of them came to fruition. There's a cable car. What a waste of taxpayers' money. A garden bridge across the Thames never got built. He's now talking about a bridge to link Scotland and Northern Ireland. Come on, it's just this big rhetorical waffling away about about oh, Britain and even talking like it's kind of like Churchillian style, but so uh, he's a clown. He is a clown and he's not fit to run government. His cabinet, they're all Jews or Muslims or Hindus. They're all Zog, agents of Israel. We've got Home Secretary Priti Patel, Indian from Uganda. As Millard says, you know, if it hadn't been for Idi Amin, Priti Patel would be fronting some grocery shop in Kampala. But she's <laughs> our Home Secretary and she is thick. She can't even bloody pronounce English properly. So it's like, I was sitting there doing, doing what we're doing. She can't say doing. She can't. <laughs> She's just a really irritating, horrible, evil woman. Only interested in herself and her own pockets. Caught red-handed in Israel when she was an international development minister, I think, under Theresa May in the last government. Caught red-handed. She should have announced these visits to Israel that she wasn't actually just on holiday. She was having meetings with certain quite high-up ministers in the Knesset. Oh, but she didn't declare the meeting, so she resigned. But in fact, it came out later that Downing Street did know about her trip to Israel and did know that she'd be meeting these people, but decided that nobody would know that Priti Patel was going and doing business on behalf of the Israeli government, the Zog government here in Britain, that they knew. It was only because one of these Israeli politicians put out a tweet. And so she had to resign. And now here she is. She's our home secretary, the one in charge of law and order and rounding people like me up putting them in the gulag, uh, yeah. getting uh, the Keystone cops to come round, breaking my door down. Uh, it's just uh, uh, it's a horrible. terrible situation. Well, you guys don't, don't even have the excuse that we do here of having literally millions of retards who believe in uh, Zionism because of the Bible. So people in uh, Britain yeah. aren't religious, is my understanding. No, they're not. Our religion was taken away from us with all the, you know, from so the... So they're just kind of beaten down and used to having government dictate everything. And The Church of England is completely cut. It's worse than the Catholicism, and they cooked as well, didn't they, after Vatican II? So there's no point. The Archbishop of 
Canterbury, this guy who's got a strange background. He was brought up by his stepfather, who was, I, I'm not sure, but then it found out his biological father was actually Jewish. He stood up in the Foreign Office on Holocaust and Remembrance Day, when my trial was still ongoing, and made a remark that, you know, I should be punished. And this is the leader of the Anglican <laughs> Church, saying that about me, an English woman, you know, both parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, going back generations in this country, and this comes along and basically says, you know, I should be locked up for anti-Semitism. Now, this is the leader of the main This state. is the leader of the Anglican Church. And he discovered that he was Jewish, like so many of these American politicians. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't it amazing? <laughs> I don't believe there's one of them who was not aware of that ever, like Kerry or Madeleine Albright. They, they know it darn well. It's just a charade they run. And, and Theresa May's father, he was a some kind of renegade vicar, Anglican vicar. But her mother, and not a lot of people know this, and it's never mentioned, Theresa May's mother was a Lebanese Orthodox. Dox Christian. Well, is she wow. receded into private life now? or No, no, she still has her seat in the oh. Houses of Parliament. Yeah, but she's just not the leader anymore, not Prime Minister. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, she she was a terrible Prime Minister. She really was, and so was David Cameron before her. But Boris really takes the biscuit. <laughs> he is an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he really is. He really is. Uh, uh, in our Houses of Parliament, I mean, it's just a shambles. And you see how they shout at each other from either side of the house, and they're all jeering. It's past its day. We need a, we need a complete rethink. We need a completely new electoral system because no, there's absolutely all... no chance of my voice or people who think like us being heard under the current political system. Both parties completely uh, run by uh, the Zionist lobby. Uh, the 80% of Tories and members of Parliament and members of the House of Lords, they're all friends of Israel. And it's pretty much the same in Labour, but the Labour Party did so much to really get rid of Corbyn and, and the Corbynites and the anti-Zionists, and they've managed to do that. And the Labour Party is now back in the hands of the Zionists. So, so it's just we've got Zionists on one side of the house and Zionists on the other. Voila. 